portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Police today hauled stacks of drugs seized in an overnight drug bust in North Andrus worth almost $1 million. Tonight, Clint Watson tells us police know the men who were arrested. A joint operation between Andrus Police, the Drug Enforcement Unit, and Marine Services officers Sunday night led to the arrest of a 51- and 45-year-old and the confiscation of about 1,000 pounds of marijuana estimated to be worth some $1 million. The operation taking place on the sea and on the land near Mastic Point. Where we were able to interdict a Ford truck that was already loaded with a number of uh, suspected packages of marijuana. We also know that there was a vessel use who was able to uh, escape our apprehension at the moment. Uh, we are vigorously uh, pursuing that part of our investigation. Chief Superintendent of Police and head of the Drug Enforcement Unit, Samuel Butler, says that two Bahamian men were taken into custody without incident. He also confirmed that the drugs were not grown locally. So that the drugs were uh, brought in from a, a foreign port, uh, we were able to uh, track the, the, the actual vessel uh, coming into the Bahamas' territorial waters. Chief Superintendent Butler says the police have been able to strengthen their support on the water this year with the acquisition of a new vessel, the Apostle, which as a result of this operation has now made its first bust. We've only uh, had the opportunity to, to obtain this uh, during the month of February and we are now obviously already fully engaging this much needed resource. There's been a number of major drug busts in Andrus over the past year. Police would not go into detail as to whether this is a part of a larger drug smuggling ring linked to the big yard. Certainly we are doing our uh, work on the back end, looking at a wider range of conspiracy cases. And uh, we won't say so much about that, uh, obviously, but uh, we are pursuing those. Uh, uh, methods of investigation. The 47 packages in four buckets containing the drugs were offloaded from the police vessel and placed onto a police truck with heavily armed officers taken to a police facility here in the capital. Now, as would have been alluded to, police believe there are more persons involved in this latest drug bust and they remain relentless in their pursuit to find those who are a part of what they call a major haul today. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Thanks so much, Clint. Police tonight investigating an apparent homicide. The body of a man believed to be a vagrant who dis was discovered beaten to death in an abandoned two-story apartment behind the Bahamas Public Services Union building on East Street South. Chief Superintendent of Police Paul Rose says the victim's naked body was discovered battered and bruised on a box spring mattress by someone working in the area. Police found that body just hours after they found the body of 49-year-old Keith Davis at his Fire Trail Road home. They believe it to be a robbery gone terribly wrong. The deceased was shot to the left chest and the incident is believed to have happened around 5.30 a.m. Chief Superintendent of Police Paul Rose says Davis was discovered after a relative went to visit him at his home. Coming up, a very special graduation. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain. The British Petroleum Company released its final results for the year ending December 31, 2014. Chief Executive Officer for BP Simon Porter said the company believes it has access to what is potentially a multi-billion barrel petroleum resource that is world-class in terms of its scale, economic potential, advantage location and operating environment. Potter added that with this in mind, during 2014, the company continued to work towards its goal of responsibly and safely drilling an offshore exploration well in the Bahamas. He noted that while they are not at the pace the company would like, it is encouraged by the signing of the license renewal addendum that provides clarity on the tenure, timing and work obligations that potential partners will require. In other business news, a new board of directors at place at the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employees Confederation or the BCCEC. 
The chamber recently held its first board meeting following the appointment of the directors to chair its 14 divisions. Derek Osborne will chair the National Health Insurance Review Board. Peter Gowdy will be responsible for employers and labor. Julian Rule will chair finance. And Leon Williams will chair innovation and competitiveness among the appointments. BCCEC CEO Edison Sumner will act as ex officio member of all committees and divisions. The board of directors will continue in their capacity through May 2016. And in international business news, the Stifle Financial Corporation embarked on yet another acquisition in a years-long buying spree, this time seeking to purchase Barclays American Wealth Management business. The New York Times is reporting that the deal will give Stifle control of what was once Lehman Brothers Wealth and Investment Management operation, adding to a sprawling operation that had already grown with the addition of Stern Agee earlier this year. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jimenita Sony. Breaking news from the House of Assembly, Marco City Member of Parliament Greg Moss has told the House just moments ago that he will resign from the Progressive Liberal Party. He will officially inform the Speaker and the House when the session resumes tomorrow. He will ask to be reseated, which implies that he will continue as a Member of Parliament, but as an independent member. I may come back to this House, Mr. Speaker. You are going to be required to exercise the discretion under Rule 23 sub 3 regarding the seating of members in this house, because tonight I'm going to resign as a member of the PLP. I cannot continue with this party in the manner in which it's operating right now. That resignation will go out during the course of tomorrow to the speaker, to the leader of our party, to the chairman of the party. I'll follow my conscience on this, Mr. Speaker, and I will ask to be reseated at the next event. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, this is a story we will continue to follow. They are creating opportunities out of impossibilities. Today, the Salvation Army's Erin Gilmore School for Blind and Visually Impaired graduated four students. It marks a milestone for the school whose last class was graduated five years ago. The school uses warning technology to ensure students receive the best in education. It's something Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie fully supports. <laughs> the highest commendation um, for having achieved something of value in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you're starting off and you have this impairment, it's an incredible thing to overcome, and that every effort should be made to determine the extent to which um, their talents can be used to improve almost certainly in service of whatever entity um, that is prepared to employ them. So the Prime Minister is of the view that the odds can be overcome and to the students he reminded them that their future does not have to be determined by their circumstances. And I think it will be to the enduring legacy of our country that we seek to touch the lives of each and every person with special needs, to create an inclusivity where each and every one of our citizens can measure his life and his accomplishments by what he can achieve if the opportunity is there. The raking and scraping is done for now as the 17th annual Cat Island Rake and Scrape Festival came to a close in Arthur's Town. Jimmy and Swain was on the island for the weekend and has all the highlights of who walked away with the cash prize for the Battle of the Bands competition. We're here at the final night of the Cat Island Rake and Scrape Festival and one of the key highlights of tonight will be the Battle of the Bands. For us, we just want to know who walks away with the top prize. Will it be Opie and the websites, or will a new champion be named? But before we found out what everybody wanted to know, the senior competitors tried their hand at scraping the saw, beating the drum, and playing the